Today, finally, I'm going to show you how to create a mini version of my ESP Home and Web Presence sensor using an ESP32 6-3 board and the LD2450 and web sensor. This time, soldering is required, but I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. And if you're ready, let's go! But first, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay. They are not just any PCB manufacturer, they are the one-stop online manufacturer with 24-7 customer service. PCBWay provides lightning fast PCB fabrication and assembly, along with offering synthetic printing and CNC machining. They provide the easiest way to make your projects come to life. Whether you're a student tinkering your garage or a seasoned engineer working on the next big thing, PCBWay has your back. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Okay, first, you can get all the parts that we are going to use for this project using the links on my website. And this time, since obviously designing cases is not one of my strengths, we are going to be using this case created by Alejandro Esteban Flores Munoz. You can get all the files from printables. And while you are there, don't forget to like the model. The design is really clever. It uses an L base that you can attach to any surface. A nut and a pin that allows us to adjust the sensor position very easily. A little tip here. If the nut fit is too tight, you can scale the design up by 4%. This will allow you to tighten it without excessive force. Then we have the housing, where the ESP32 skin tree fits perfectly. It has a little cutout for the USB-C port. And finally we have the front plate. Here is where the LD2450 will go. With a little push, it will stay in place easily. To put it together, you just have to press the front plate against the housing and then insert the pin to the back of the housing like this. Now, let's take it apart again so we can solder all the parts together. The C3 board is a mini version of the ESP32 board with only one CPU core and 16 pins available. For this project, we are only going to use four. The fireball pin, the ground pin, and the TX and RX pins to communicate with the LD2450. The LD2450 has many connection forms available. For this project, we are going to use the pins on the top. For this, we are going to use four female to male Dupont cables. And since the pins on the top are a little small, we need to remove the plastic cover from them. This time, we are going to be soldering the terminals on the Dupont cables to the pins and covering them using some heat shrink tubes to provide isolation. Then we are going to be soldering the male part of the cables to the C3 board. Now, let me bring all my soldering equipment so I can show you how to do it. I use these arms to help me keep everything in place for an easier soldering experience. Once you find the right position, where the bottom of the board is resting on top of the plastic cover of the male part of the cable, we can start soldering. First, let's start with the 5 volt pin. Here is an image of the pins that you have to solder on the C3 board. For a good connection, heat the parts first using the tip of the soldering iron. Then, add a tiny bit of solder to the joint, making sure you don't connect other pins on the board together. Then, do the same for all the other three pins on the board. Once we're done, we can cut the excess of the male part of the Dupont cable 
so we can click on the case. Now, we need to solder the female terminals to the pins on the LD2450. Here is an image of the pins that you have to solder on the sensor. First, let's separate the cables so we can move the heat shrink tube as far as we can from the soldering area to prevent the tube from being affected by the heat of the soldering iron, like it happened to me. Now, before soldering, insert a piece of heat shrink tube and slide it to the end of the cable. Then connect the female part to the pin on the sensor. Be sure to point this part of the connector to the front, since this is where we are going to apply the solder. And then again, preheat the parts, and then apply a tiny bit of solder to the joint. Don't forget to clean the excess solder from the tip of the iron after every pin to avoid excess solder by accident. Then slide the heat shrink tube to cover the solder part. And then using the tip of the soldering iron, make it shrink. And that's it! Continue with the rest of the pins. Just be sure to check that you are connecting the right one from the C3 board to the sensor. If you have any doubt, check the table on my website. And that's it! Now that we finished the hard part, let's start with the software part. First, to flash the ESP32C3, you need to press and hold the boot button, then connect the USB-C cable connected to your computer. Then, on my website, go to ESP Home Firmware. Here select the version that you want to install. Click on it. Then select the device from the list and click Connect. Now click on Install Minimum Wave Sensor, and then click Install. Now, we just need to wait for the process to be over. Give it a couple of minutes.
And now, just click on next. Now, just click on the X. Then we need to disconnect the board from the computer. Wait a couple of seconds, and then, without pressing any button, connect it again. Then, click on the button to flash the firmware. If you see this window again, we need to wait. You can try again, without disconnecting the board from the PC. It will probably take up to 5 minutes, just be patient. Once you see the connect to Wi-Fi option, click on it. Here, select your network, enter your password, and then click connect. And that's it. Now click on add to home assistant. Click on open link. Here, click on OK. Select the discovered device from the list, and then click submit, and then finish. Here you can select an area for the device. And then click on finish. Since this device doesn't have an LD2450 sensor connected yet, the states are unknown. Now before connecting the one we soldered earlier, let's assemble it first. Start by pulling the board inside the housing. Check that the USB-C port is well aligned on the bar. Then bend the cables so they can fit inside the housing. Now put the sensor on the back of the front plate and then press it onto the housing. For it to fit inside, we need to carefully bend the pins inwards like this. Now, just insert the pin into the bottom of the housing. You can loosen the nut to adjust the position. Now we need to connect the USB-C cable to power the sensor up. Then, go back to Home Assistant. I'm going to add it really quick. And here you can see all the values. Now, to add it to your dashboard, we need to copy the name of the device. For this, just open any sensor, click on the gear icon, and here copy the name including the numbers at the end. Then, go back to my website. Go to how to use it on your dashboard. Paste the name on the field, and then click on generate YAML configuration. Now go to your dashboard, click on the edit icon, click on add a card, and look for manual. Then go back to my website. Click on copy to clipboard. And paste it in Home Assistant. Then click on save. And that's it. You can see on the top card that it is already working. Now to configure the zones, we are going to use the Highlink app. You can install it using any of the buttons on my website. Once installed, open it. Select the sensor, touch your set, select area selection, and then you can activate the zones that you want to use and adjust them by driving the box on the app. Once we're satisfied, click on submit. And if you go to home assistant, you can see on the card that the zones already appear. And if we edit one, it reflects on the interface in Home Assistant. Now to use it in your automations, go to Settings, Integrations, ESP Home. Here you can use any of the zone presence entities like a normal motion sensor. If you want to use it with Bermuda, go back to Integrations and go to Bluetooth. 
And here, if you click on edit, you can select the area for the device here. That will set the area that this device will report to Bermuda. As always, the Yandel file for the project is available for the Tinkerers and Automation Heroes members. You can become one by joining our Patreon, or you can buy it directly on our coffee shop. And if you want help with some assistant, you can book a one hour meeting with me, so we can take a closer look at your smart home and help you achieve the seamless automation experience based on your needs, so you can make your smart home actually help you achieve your goals. If you like no work, please consider becoming a member of Patreon like all these amazing people. If you can become a member, you can always donate whatever you like using the button on our website. And if you can't do that, don't worry, just remember to leave a comment on the video and share it with your friends. I truly appreciate all your support. I also wanted to include a special thank you for all of you who have reached out over the past months. Your support really means the world to me. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you on the next video. Bye!